Hello and welcome to South Africa. Um, it was a great trip down, uh, but now what I'd like to do is to go and meet the rest of the guys who are going to be on this trip with us. Alex had provided us with BMW F800 GSAs, and once we were packed, we headed out of the city to begin our real African adventure. After the first 100 k's or so of fairly monotonous motorway, we went through Ritz into Bethlehem, and then we reached our first stop, the Golden Gate Hotel in Highlands National Park. Right, Alex, so we, we finished the first day. Yeah, great um, day, eh? The one thing I've really wanted to, to, to try and find out is who comes on one of your trips? This trip is quite typical of um, what we're doing at the moment. Um, we've got a couple of guys on here that are both very experienced. Likewise, we've also got a, a couple on here doing their very, very first tour. Um, they seem to be loving it. That sunlight as we uh, were going up over the loop, zebra in the background, wildebeest in the background, sun shining on the Golden Mountains. Mm -hmm. Perfect. And of course, we have a little bit of excitement with uh, with a couple with a flat tire. Yeah, yeah, we'll uh, we'll get that sorted. Though. It's, <laughs> you know, it wouldn't be an adventure unless something was going on. You know. No. And day two is going to be lots more wildlife to see on the way, and um, we're heading down to uh, Rourke's Drifts, uh -huh. which everybody will know from the uh, the Zulu uh, film. One of the other things that that really intrigues me is what what would induce somebody to think about planning this adventure because I'm sure there are a lot of people, a lot of people probably watching. Africa's a big place and first thing we have to make sure everybody understands <laughs> Africa isn't one country, okay? Um, Southern Africa, sure, from, if you're flying from the UK, it's a, it's a 12 hour flight, but hey, man, when did you get here? There's so many contrasting things just in South Africa. This is why they call it the Rainbow Nation. It's so versatile. It's so. It's got so many different things going on for it. You know, each right. each each region has got such a different attraction. And, and of course, the other thing for, from anybody coming from the UK is currently the exchange rate is is ridiculously. It's it's kind of good. good when when you consider if you if you do the conversions, we're paying seventy pence for a liter of fuel down here. Mm. We're paying just under a pound for a beer. <laughs> Which always helps. Well, you know, it's, it's the way we tend to judge what the economy is like in any, any country. Eh? The next day we headed off and the first job, of course, was to get Andy's tyre fixed. Alex had already phoned ahead and with Joe now routing Pillion with him, we aimed for the tyre garage. Not only did they fix the tyre, they didn't even charge us. So we felt that at least a couple of cases of beer was going to be suitable recompense. Good evening. This is the Rourke's Drift Hotel overlooking the magnificent Buffalo River. We eventually made it to Rourke's Drift, but sadly not before the museum had closed. After all, it was a 350k trip. However, we were able to walk around the site itself and get a sense of the comparative isolation and the history of the place. Walking into this chapel, it's really difficult to express the atmosphere and the emotion uh, of how it feels to be here. Uh, this is the same chapel that British soldiers would have prayed in, presumably attended burials in. It's been beautifully preserved and um, it, it's, just, uh, it's just a really weird feeling. I mean, over a hundred British soldiers prevented the Zulu army from invading colonial Natal. There were 11 Victoria Crosses awarded here. This is the final resting place of James Rourke, first lieutenant in the Buffalo Border Guard, who created the first crossing of the Buffalo River, but actually died four years before the battle itself. So as the sun sets over the Rourke's Drift Hotel, it's time to grab a beer or two, maybe even three, before we contemplate tomorrow's adventure on Gravel Road. Today we head for Swaziland, and as you can see, dear viewer, it's rush hour, and Ian is indeed rushing to get ahead of Alex. Great tyre mixed with some more dirt roads and stopping to meet some of the locals along the way, we got to the first of our four border crossings. Now if anyone watching this has got any concerns at all about border crossings, there's no need. The whole process was friendly, hassle-free, although it really was a case of seven men with seven pens. And we mustn't forget, of course, the one woman who was there, and she was the most efficient. 
So with passport stamped, our first experience of Swaziland was a roadblock. No problem here though. Vehicles were fine, paperwork was fine, so we were all waved through. We were heading for our next stop, and that was to stay in traditional Swazi beehive huts in Milwani Game Reserve. We were greeted by the local residents, and as you can see, it didn't take Alex long at all to get into the Swazi way of life. 